Hi, I'm Zach Smith from Route 113 Boat Sales. Today we're going to be doing one of our video owner's manuals. This time we're going to be on a Cobia 220cc. So let's climb up and take a look at it. We're going to start every day on the Cobia 220cc at our battery switch compartment. Actually on this boat it's not in a compartment. It's right here in the fore. Easy to get to. Under normal operating conditions, this switch should be in the one and two position, allowing both batteries to be on. You can also operate this boat with just the second battery or just the first battery. I recommend if you're at the sandbar listening to music without the engine running, put it in one or the other. Right above that, we have our battery charger plug if your boat is equipped. While I'm down here, we have our freshwater washdown receptacle right here with raw water being on the opposite side. If you come down inside of here, you'll see we have access to our batteries all right inside of here. Battery one and battery two are both labeled. All the wiring is labeled. We have our ground block right here, Yamaha device hub, and our uh, charger for our two batteries right here. Additionally, right over here, which you're probably going to have a hard time seeing in the video, we have our fuel water separator and our primer ball. Again, easy to get to. We fold this seat back up, gives us a nice jump seat, and as we set this down, this will pop in and latch. Be sure when you close this to have that closed and get it down before you deploy it. I've seen some people break those. As we move around the back side of the 240, we have our live well right here. There's a white standpipe that comes in your blue owner's bag that threads in and screws in down into that compartment, or down into that tube, I should say. Don't just push it in, you'll break it. Down underneath of here, we have our freshwater wash down receptacle right here, along with our under gunnel rod storage. Coming up from there, we have are under the leaning post storage, as well as five rod holders and two cup holders. And then moving up to the dash, we have all of our switch gear. On here, the first one we have is our nav lights, up if you're running at night, back if you're anchored at night, middle position off. On over from there we have our cockpit lights, Cockpit lights are the blue lights that walk, light up the walkway going around the boat when you're using it. One over from there, we have another middle position off switch. Up for your live ball light, middle position off, down for your compartment light. Coming over one from there, we have our spreader light switch. This does our forward and aft spreader lights in this boat. Followed by our overhead lights, which are our blue, three blue overhead lights. Coming over from there, we have another blank accessory switch, middle position off. Then our live well. Again, please remember to screw in that standpipe. Don't just shove it in there. Our fresh water wash down. Fresh water wash down, again, is located underneath of the port rear covering board. And the fill is located in the back of the boat. Salt water wash down is our next one. That is located under the starboard rear covering board. These are both middle position off switches with down being accessories. It's very important to remember which switches are middle position off so that you don't accidentally leave something on and kill your battery. Right below that we have our bilge. The bilge has a light right above it. If that light is on, the bilge is running. If that light stays on for a prolonged, for a long period of time without the switch being on, you're going to want to check the uh, float and make sure there's nothing stuck under it. One over from there we have our horn, followed by another accessory switch. This is another middle position off switch. Right below there we have a 12 volt receptacle. And the breakers for all this is located inside the console. As we come across we have a tilt helm. To tilt the helm, press this tab on the bottom and you can tilt the helm up and down. Next to that we have our Yamaha key switch. Above that we have our Trip tab control. Above that we have our Yamaha 6YC gauge. 
I have a great walkthrough on this gauge in our how-to videos, which I'll link down in the comments. A couple phone calls I get all the time on the Yamaha key switch. Your lanyard must be hooked up. If you try to start this boat without the lanyard hooked up, you'll get an alarm and the engine will just crank. The other phone call I get is they've left the engine in gear. The engine will not crank at all. On the side of this, there's a button you can depress and you can enter free throttle mode. If you wanted to warm the engine up at a raised RPM, you could press this in and free throttle the engine, come back to neutral, next time you shift, you will shift into gear. I have another great video in our how-to section on how to adjust the stiffness of this to keep the throttle from walking backwards while you're using it. Last but not least, we have our JL Audio Media Master 50 head unit. Once again, there's a full how-to walkthrough on how to use this in our uh, how-to section on our YouTube page. Below that, we have our glove box. Inside our glove box, we have a dual US or a USB for inputting music into the Media Master 50. As we come around and come up to our console here, you'll see our breakers on the back side right there. We have a head down inside of this boat. This is a pump out head only. And the pump out is located right here on the side of the console. As we move forward, we have our flip out bow backrest. These are completely removable if you choose to leave them at home. Below that, we have our JL Audio speaker, one of our three bow courtesy lights. We have our locking storage up in the bow. Lift and twist to open. Push down and twist to close. We have a removable insert here. There are latches on the bottom. Simply flip them. Pull that in and slide over to detach it. And then slide it back in and latch it to reinstall. Up inside of the bow, we have our anchor locker compartment with anchor hanger. And down inside of there, we have a uh, ring to tie your better end off to. Again, twist and latch the close. Front and center there, we have our nav lights, our red and green. As we move back down the port side of the boat, we have another fold-out bow backrest as well as a cooler underneath of this seat. Fuel fill located right here. Pop up cleat. Four more rod holders. On the underside of the hard top, we have two storage compartments, one in the front, one in the back. Pull both latches to open. These are on tension hinges, so there's no spring. Then pull both out to reclose. The same goes for the back. Again, we have our speakers here. And in the very back here, we have our mast light for traveling at night, which you're probably not gonna see in the video, but it's right up there. With that said, let's hop down and take a look at the engine. Moving to the back of the Cobia 220cc, a couple things you need to know about here. This is a Yamaha 200, 2.8 liter outboard, four cylinder. This yellow cap here is our dipstick. Pull it out, wipe it off, stick it back in. You want the oil level to be between the two dots. Down on the gear case, at the bottom here, we have our oil fill and our oil level screws. We fill the oil from down here until it comes out here. On the front of the gear case, we have a small hole. Take a eighth inch drill bit. You can clean sand, muck, and debris out of that. That small hole is how your speedometer works. It's not uncommon where we live for that to get clogged. We have our primary fuel filter cup located right here and our fuel water separator in the boat we saw earlier. Our break-in period on this boat is going to be our first 10 hours. You want to vary your RPMs for that. Run for a little while, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 35, 25. Move the throttle around. The idea is you want the engine to break in at the full RPM band, not just one speed. Your next service after that is going to be 100 hours, or I'm sorry, 25 hours after break-in period oil change followed by 100 hours, which is another oil change, 
At 200 hours, we add spark plugs to that oil change. At 300 hours, we add water pump thermostat to that oil change. 400 hours, back to spark plugs. 500 hours, we look at timing belts. On the opposite side of this engine, down on, underneath of here, we have our fresh water flush out. Unscrew this. Be sure not to lose this little garden hose washer. It's very prone to falling off. Make sure that stays in there. I recommend keeping a pack of these on the boat. Hook your garden hose up to here, turn the water on. Water will flush through the engine and clean everything out. I recommend five to 10 minutes on that. Make sure you seat this good when you screw it back on so that the engine doesn't have a leak. Right above that, we have our oil filter, Yamaha oil filter right there. And then electrical connections, battery connections, all that fun stuff. Last but not least, we have two Bennett bolt trim tabs, one on either side with controls up at the dash. And last but not least, drain plug goes middle center down there. The drain plug has an O-ring on it, so you don't want to over-tighten it. You'll bust the O-ring and it'll leak. That pretty much wraps us up on the Cobia 220cc. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, 302-436-1737. Again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. I'm Zach Smith. Thank you for watching.